Welcome to the third and last episode of my electric skateboard series. In the previous episodes, we focused on creating a handheld remote controller. Today, we are shifting focus to the skateboard. But first off, let me give you a brief explanation of how the skateboard will work. The plan is to use an electric motor to drive a single wheel via a belt, which is a common approach within the realm of DIY electric skateboards. The motor will be secured to the trucks using a motor mount and underneath the skateboard there will be a flat 3D printed enclosure to house all the electronics. The skateboard is powered by a 10S 3P battery which is used to drive an electric motor. Current to the motor is regulated by a VESC which is a popular open source motor controller. In this particular setup the remote controller sends data to the skateboard over Wi-Fi using a pair of NRF24 L01 modules. An Arduino then processes the data into a signal that is readable by the VESC. There, the signal is interpreted and used to control the motor speed and direction. The Arduino also checks how much use is left in the skateboard battery and sends this information back to the hand controller where it is displayed on a screen for the user. Utilizing the VESC's 5V output, we power both the Arduino and the Wi-Fi module. A converter is used to bring the voltage down to 3.3V which is required for the Wi-Fi module. The foundation of an electric skateboard is, unsurprisingly, a skateboard. Since my experience with skateboards is next to none, I decided to hit up the local skateboard shop and consult the gurus. After checking the lineup, I opted for a skateboard that is rather stiff. This will let me mount the battery and the enclosure underneath the skateboard without concerns about damage from excessive bending. So I left the shop with my newly purchased board, eager to get home and start building. I had already bought most of the electrical components and skateboard hardware, so once back in the apartment, I laid everything out on a table to take a closer look. I then proceeded to install the trucks to the board. Since the trucks move relative to the board when turning, I decided to secure the motor to the trucks using a motor mount. This prevents issues such as belt twisting and ensures even tensioning of the belt since the motor will be moving with the trucks. I wanted to make my own motor mount, so I began by sketching out the basic design in Fusion 360. Using a caliper, I measured out the shape of the skateboard trucks in this cross section and put those measurements into CAD. This particular type of truck is widely used in the DIY skateboard community since it has a non-round cross section that minimizes the risk of the motor mount slipping. The motor will be fastened to the bracket with four screws through elongated holes. This will allow me to adjust the tension of the belt by sliding the motor closer or further away from the wheel. To protect the belt from dirt and small rocks from the road, I'll be making a cover. After experimenting with a few different designs, I landed on one that I thought seemed promising. It was crucial for me to find a design that I would be able to make at home with the tools available to me. To double check the functionality, I 3D printed the entire assembly. I decided to make the motor mount from a 10mm thick aluminum plate. Using the 3D printed bracket as my guide, I carefully traced the shape onto the metal and then proceeded to cut it out with a jigsaw. Once I was finished making the motor mount and content with the amount of aluminum particles in my lungs, I was finally ready to build the motor and truck assembly. The gear for the belt is fastened to the wheels with six screws through the wheel hub. After adjusting the screws until the gear ran true, I loosened them one at a time, applied Loctite to the thread and then put them back in. Once this process was completed for every screw, I gave a final tightening to all in a crisscross pattern. Then I put the motor on the bracket and the bracket on the truck. Also here making sure to apply Loctite to all threads to prevent them coming loose from vibrations. After that I tightened the belt by pulling back the motor and tightened the screws. Lastly I installed the belt cover. <laughs> 
The next step was to make the enclosure for the electrical system. But to make the designing of the enclosure easier, I wanted a model of the skateboard itself, so I used my phone to 3D scan the skateboard. The goal was to capture the board's curvature, which will be a key element in making sure the enclosure fits seamlessly against the bottom of the skateboard. I imported the scan model into Fusion 360 and did some cleanup to keep only the relevant geometry. But when I measured the skateboard in CAD, it did not match the actual size of the skateboard. Armed with a trusty yardstick, I measured the skateboard's width and used that to scale the model to the correct size. Unfortunately, the 3D scan did not capture the skateboard's edges sharply. So, I snapped a picture of the board, used the tool to cut out the shape, slapped it onto the CAD model, and used that to trace the outline. Using the outer contour and the curvature from the scan, I created splines along various cross sections of the board. Then, I used the splines to make a surface that I later on turned into a solid. Following that, I designed an enclosure in CAD and used the model of the skateboard to construct the surface between the two parts. In order to get some understanding of how large the enclosure would have to be, I laid out all the components in a cardboard box. I find it hard to determine how much space will be required for the electric components from CAD alone, especially when dealing with a lot of cables. It's possible, but wiring the cables in CAD is definitely time consuming. My thinking was that this simple setup would allow me to assess spatial requirements more effectively. Given the limited build volume of my printer, I will print the enclosure in two halves and then glue them together later on. I printed the model in an upright position in order to align the layers for maximum support of the battery weight. Printing it flat could have resulted in weak horizontal lines. If the enclosure was to experience an impact or significant bending, there could be a potential risk of cracks propagating along the layer lines. In a worst case scenario, this could lead to the enclosure splitting in two and stuff falling out. The first half came out great, but the second half was a bit more geometrically complex and I made an oversight when slicing the part in Cura. In 3D printing, support structures are critical for dealing with overhangs. They act as a foundation for the overhanging section so that the material has something to be placed on. Once the print is finished, these supports are removed. The part that I had made had already generated support that was way too thin and long to be able to support itself. This caused the support structure, here highlighted in blue, to fall off. But by gluing on a scrap part to the print and fine tuning the height to match the extrude nozzle with a piece of tape, I was able to resume the print. This was quite the relief since I wouldn't have to restart the 14 hour print. After removing all the supports and sanding down the surfaces, I applied a coat of epoxy to further strengthen the part. I thought the layer of epoxy gave a nice glossy finish. I was also pleasantly surprised with the fit against the skateboard. Confident in the fit, I proceeded to drill the screw holes using the enclosure as a template. Now that we've covered the main mechanical elements, it is time to bring the electrical system to life. Using the enclosure, I measured out the cable lengths for the wire assembly that will connect the VESC, battery, loop key and Arduino together. I started by soldering on the connector for the VESC and applied heat shrink tubing over the solder joints. From these main leads, I then attached two smaller wires, which the Arduino will use to measure the voltage of the battery. At last, I soldered on two XT90 connectors. One for the loop key and one for the battery. To house the smaller components, I made a box which will be glued to the inside of the enclosure. After a few iterations, I came up with this. <laughs> 
I then solder the pieces together that will be placed inside the box. To power the skateboard on and off, I've chosen to use an XT90 loop key. This key operates by breaking the circuit between the battery and VESC when removed. The physical disconnection prevents any small current draw that could potentially drain the battery over time. Additionally, its simplicity makes it a more budget-friendly option compared to most commercially available electronic switches. From a piece of wire, I created a loop that will connect the two poles of the connector together. After bending it to shape, I soldered it onto the XT90 connector. Following that, I designed the handle for the connector, 3D printed it, and glued everything together with a generous amount of epoxy. Then, I clamped the components together and allowed them to dry. Here's the final key, now spruced up and ready to go. A minor setback was that the pre-installed bullet connectors on the VESC did not match those of the motor, so I had to swap them out. And that wraps up the construction of the electrical system. All the wires are now in place and should be properly connected. So let's test it. When connecting the VESC for the first time, you have to configure it for your specific motor, battery and remote. The VESC software has a built-in function for identifying the motor characteristics, which involves starting the motor. Knowing that the motor was going to start for the first time was kind of scary. So I checked the validity of my home insurance and then pressed start. But to my liking, the room temperature remained consistent and the motor started running. This tells me that the VESC successfully interfaces with the motor and battery and I could now focus on the Arduino code. The coding actually isn't too bad. The VESC does most of the work and all I have to do is to feed it the proper signal. Additionally, there's a lot of pre-written code in libraries that helps to establish the communication between the Arduino and VESC. Following some trial and error, the remote was up and running. All that was left was to put everything in the enclosure and then put the enclosure on the board. Using three strips of Velcro, I secured the battery to the enclosure. I then installed the charging port, plugged that into the battery system and secured the connections with some heat shrink tubing. When in use, the VESC tends to generate quite a bit of heat. To help keep the temperature down, I plan to incorporate a heatsink. This heatsink will be placed within a slot at the bottom of the enclosure, allowing the flanges of the heatsink to be exposed to the surrounding environment. This aids in dissipating heat, effectively cooling the VESC. So I applied thermal paste between the VESC and the heatsink, and used temperature resistant silicone to secure everything in place. It was then installed into the enclosure. The XT90 connector, which the loop key connects to, has a designated position integrated into the enclosure design. It is then secured in place with a bar that extends over the connector and clamps it down. 
On one side of the enclosure, there is a panel providing access to the key slot and the charging port. After making the final connections, I crammed the cables inside and applied some rubber tape around the edges of the enclosure and on the battery. My thinking is that it will help to absorb board flexing and thereby reduce the bending forces on the enclosure. Lastly, I installed the entire assembly onto the skateboard. As I told you, skateboarding is not my expertise. But the time had come. I was going to learn how to ride this thing. So I jumped on and went for it. The following days, all I did was to ride around. I explored Stockholm, smaller cities, the countryside, and even used it to get to work. And the more time I spent on it, the more comfortable I got, and the more fun it became. This was a real fun project that taught me about a lot of things, such as designing, making parts, working with electronics, and coding. Now, I'm almost halfway into the next project, so I gotta get going. Thanks for watching, bye.